Welcome to Caddy Quick Clips, your quick guide to successful drawing and modelling with Caddy. Working on other people's drawings isn't always easy. There are times when they're drawn in ways which are unfamiliar to you. There are times when they're not drawn very well at all. So lines not meeting, badly layered and so on. And there are times when a drawing that you get has actually been dumbed down from its original. So things like blocks exploded and so on, which can make a drawing more difficult to work with. So let's have a look at how we can mitigate this situation and just make it a, a little easier to work on the drawings that you're given. So let's see how we can use some of the tools we have on the right-click context sensitive menu to make a little more sense of the layering within our drawing here. First of all, we'll have a look and see what we have. So layering and display, layer display there, and we'll see that we can select groups of layers, individual ones using the control key and the shift key uh, in order to select single or, or deselect uh, groups of layers too. But here we're just going to go with layer zero and we see we have a combination of lines, markers, and landscaping on there. So say we want to put them, these markers onto a new layer. In the first instance we can go to our layer display and set up a layer for them to be received onto. So we can create one there and we can say new new level markers. Okay that and we'll see that that appears on a drop down list there for layers. So how do we select those? Well we could say in the first instance that we want to quick select all the lines that have a colour that is equal to yellow. Select all of those, and what we have now is just the yellow line selected. But we have lines which we don't want as well. So how can we deal with those? Well, if we right click and go to our quick select once again, we'll see that we can actually unselect, and here, if we choose our length, we could choose a length for lines to deselect that are greater than 1. And here we're just left with the very short lines that are our marker positions. And then we can change the layer for those to our new level markers layer. Incidentally, if we're back with our drawing here and we want to get back the, the objects we selected, a right click, recall last selection, will show us those objects selected again, in which we could choose maybe this time to alter their pen colour. Taking our drawing further, let's have a look now at the objects we have here. So we have our, our landscaping, and these were probably blocks in, in the first instance, but they're now exploded to lines. Difficult to deal with, and very, very memory hungry in terms of our drawing. If we right click, we'll see that one of the options we have here is just to display that particular layer, objects layer, and we'll see we have them uh, there with the other objects too. Now if we select just those landscaping objects, again we could put them onto a different layer, but here we're just going to focus on the fact that we're going to try to, to reduce the significance of a, uh, those number of objects within our drawing speed wise and you'll see that we have 4,779 objects selected that's a lot of objects for just a little bit of landscaping however if we right click we'll see that on the context sensitive menu under make we have make polyline from lines and arcs so having selected our objects we can click on the make polyline and what we'll see is that we have 464 polylines now created for them from the 4,720 lines and curves that we had. And we also have a, a readout there for the number of objects ignored. In this case, none. So we've significantly cut down the number of objects in our drawing. Taking this further again, if we go to show all layers, we might want to be a little bit more selective in the way that we, we treat our objects, turning them into polylines. So, for instance, we have a blue line here, and we might want to take that path and turn it into a polyline. Well, if we have extended chains of objects, how can we deal with those? 
or using the select tools here and these tools double up for marking and selecting two different ways of tagging objects within Caddy um, and we can use them for selection here we're going to tag by trace so we're going to select them in this case we'll pick our starting object the way we're going to go and what we'll see is that we have more than one path that we can adopt here so this is a perfect illustration of how we can choose the objects that we want to take so if we go in this direction we'll see that we now have those objects selected we can make them into a polyline now we could also change their color and make them much easier to deal with as well And we could do the same thing, for instance, on, on the roadway here. So we'll just tag with a trace, and there are other options available, of course, and they're free to uh, explore those. But if we go in that direction, we can now make that into a polyline. And we can even, having selected it once again, make an offset from that polyline. And if we put in just 1.8 foot path width, here we're working in meters, point away from the object, and we now have, again, the polyline as an offset to the polyline we started with. One of the things that can be a constant irritation when trying to work with other people's drawings is the fact that they don't always hatch successfully with an auto trace routine. And here we've got uh, an outline of a, a building. If we go to the hatch tools and just try to use inside it comes up with the red marker to say that we have an inconsistency we can remove that with a regen but we're left wanting maybe to hatch that shape so our hatch outline here I'm going to choose a simple fill or choose a, a color so I'll choose a blue and Rather than having to trace individual bits or do uh, rectangles, what we can do is use the associative hatch. And it says enter the polygon to hatch, and we can literally just trace around the area that we wish to hatch. We don't need a continuous boundary. We can just literally indicate our way around the building. And to finish off, we right click and option end. And there we see we have our, our hatch. If we want to add islands in, then we still have all the menu options there under modify for adding corners, removing corners, adding islands, uh, moving origins, and so on. But that's a, a nice, easy way to do maybe complicated hatches without resorting to drawing polylines or trying to make boundaries fit. Often when we work on imported drawings such as these, we have lots and lots of text, a lot of it which maybe doesn't coincide with the way that we would like it to be displayed, so different fonts and so on. So how can we do that very quickly without having to resort to changing all the properties of each individual piece of text? Well, if we've selected one of our pieces of text, we notice that it has a style, and here that's uh, T model F, and if we choose another one here, we'll see that that has Roman simplex. So if we go to our text set and choose our manage option, if we've got T model F, we see that it uses a TXT font. Well, if we change from that TXT font to something maybe such as Arial, and if we right click over, we'll see that we have the option for normal, bold, and italic, and so on. We'll say OK to that, and then OK once again, and then just do a regen, and we'll see that all the text using that particular style have now changed, and we could do the same for any other text uh, styles within our drawing. So a really quick, easy way to change the, the way text appears on our drawings.
So with a drawing such as this, where we have lots of individual levels taken, we could find that by the time we get the drawing, we need to change the levels because maybe the benchmark has changed or so on. So how can we do that very, very quickly? Well, the first thing we're going to do here is select one of our levels and we'll see that it's on layer levels there, which is index at number three. If we right click and go to layering and display, we can turn on just the objects there by virtue of that layer. And there we are, we'll see we've got rather a lot of levels here. If we select them all, we'll see that we have 473 individual text levels. That's an awful lot of levels with a risk of getting things wrong. So how can we do that? Maybe we need to add a figure to our levels. So first thing we'll do is we'll go to layering and display and layer set. And I'm just going to create a new layer to put them on. So we'll have converted levels. And we'll OK that. And if we go to our layer display, what we could do is make sure we're displaying that one and uh, levels, uh, original levels uh, layer. So we have them now. We can go to our text tools here and we can go to copy ext and we'll choose the multiple. So here we can choose scope, so all that we've got uh, shown on our drawing here at this moment in time. And what we're going to do is increment them, not by adding a, a letter, but in this case, adding a, a number. Now we can either edit the existing, or, as it may be more prudent, we can actually create a new one, copying it onto the converted levels layer, so that we can compare and just make sure that we've got them all. So we can add that figure of, say, 100. If we're adding it to the start, so in other words, before the decimal point, we put in 100. If we're using uh, adding points after the decimal point, then we would use the end. So I'll say OK to that. And we'll see that we now have doubled entries. And here, if we just pick one of the pieces of text, we can move that just away slightly, and we see that we, we now have both the entries for the original and the, the new converted levels. Within the DTM application within Caddy, and here if we right click and then go to load application, and we'll choose DTM, so digital terrain modeling, we see we get our terrain modeling tools in which we can convert points. So we can use a number of different ways of doing this. We can have an indicator point, a construction point there, and a piece of text. We can have a block reference and text. Or we can have a particular attribute within a block to gain our height uh, information. However, what we have here is probably an instance where all of the blocks have been exploded. So now instead of a nice block that has an origin that we can use to, to locate our heights, we simply have lines. So how can we deal with something like that? It's not going to be as pinpoint accurate as these because we won't know exactly where the, the level was taken, but we can get an approximation using the survey tools. And if we go to the survey application and survey one, we'll see there's a, a tool here, insert point at text origin. So firstly, isolate the objects that we want. So we'll select one there and just display the objects layer. So there we have our, all of our, our points that we wish to convert. Now we can go text uh, origin at points there, but we'll put the converted levels as our active layer just before we do that. So text uh, point at text origin and we'll do the scope. So now we see we have our, our points. So for each one of those pieces of text, and we could go and modify them if we wanted to uh, just move them over if there were any that were particularly out, out of the way. But having done that, what we can do now is actually convert those points using the DTM tools to convert those points into 3D space. And here we might wish to, just using the layer controls, turn on maybe 3D converted points because then we can choose to put our points onto a different layer using the convert points tool. So there we are, 3D points converted. We're using points at text this time. 
Okay to that. Drag our rectangle around. And there we see in space our 3D converted points which we can create our tin model from. And just using Fong shaded with wireframe there, we can see that we created our site model. Uh, for more information on the DTM tools, take a look at some of the other, other videos available on the Caddy website and through YouTube. You can find more information on Caddy on our website, www.caddysoftware.com. And check out the Caddy Software Channel on YouTube for more tips and tricks on using Caddy.